All right, in our previous videos, we got this running to my satisfaction. The symbol part has some random variation in it. Keep it from getting boring. Well, yeah, yeah. But now it's time for some some harmonic, melodic, some uh, some musical content, eh? So let's plug into the main output of this giant Pittsburgh lifeforms module up here. And uh, this has been plugged in the whole time. This is the MIDI interface. And I have that connected to a keyboard controller over here. Over here, out of, out of shot. Now you can't, that's, that's the corner of it right there. Can't really see it. And that's an Arturia key step. And uh, Lifeforms has internal patching. So you can play it without having to plug anything in. Unlike this stuff down here, which has to be has to be cabled up together before it will as so much as make a noise. The uh, Pittsburgh Lifeforms, what do they call this, SV1, it's a, it's a full synth voice and it is internally patched so I mean, you just you plug in a controller and it's playable right out of the box. You can completely override the internal patching with all of these jacks on the front panel. But for now, uh, let's just use the built-in patch. And it uh, uh, volts per octave coming out of the MIDI section will control the uh, this oscillator. There is a second one you have to patch it up in order to use it. The second one is just there for later. Four of the waves that come out of this oscillator are routed to the uh, mixer here. And what we're hearing is the Sol wave. It also has available with the internal patch, a sine wave. with modulation right here is internally routed to that LFO. So you can hear the square wave being modulated in sync with whatever rate you set on that knob. doubling because this is positive, negative, positive, negative, and uh, pulse width modulation changes the width of the square wave. Normally it's the cycle period and it will be 50% on, 50% off in terms of time. It will spend half the time on, half the time off, but you can change that to like 10% on and 90% off. That's what the pulse width modulation does is it moves that value and because that's a bipolar wave it'll move it in the positive direction and then in the negative direction. That's why you hear it sweep twice for every one blink of this light. I'm not going to use that for right now. Then there's also a sub oscillator, which is linked to this oscillator, but it's an octave lower. And then you can blend, uh, you can blend a bunch of waves together. 
together with this mixer section right here. If I want to use oscillator 2, I can plug it in. Just take the saw wave from oscillator 2, plug it in to channel 4. It's just stuck at the same pitch. It's not changing. So oscillator 2 pitch is not hardwired to the volts per octave output of that. So to get it to change, we have to actually take that out. There is a volts per octave output that they've handily provided right here. We plug it into the volts per octave output over here. Now they're moving, but they're not in tune with each other. Now, see, I gotta get them in tune. kick them out of tune with each other and they will move in unison and the pitch is set relative to these knobs so if you want that to accurately play with notes if I hit a C on the keyboard if I want that to actually be a C I need to use a tuner plug that one of those waves into the tuner and I manually tune these knobs. And with it being analog, it takes this thing like 10 minutes to heat up and for the oscillators to stabilize. There's no point tuning it before then because it'll just drift out. You have to, yeah, it takes a while for this thing to warm up. That's one thing that kind of irritated me at first <clears throat> takes a while to get used to the notion that you have to wait until the instrument is ready to perform but it's been powered up for a while so we should be good I'm not going to bother tuning it right at this moment just mess with it as it is can hear that oscillator 2 is set kind of low and there is a parameter over here called FM for frequency modulation and it will modulate the frequency of oscillator 1 by the frequency of oscillator 2. I think that the uh, oscillator 2 sine wave is internally routed to this. So if I listen to oscillator 1, turn up the FM a little bit to get this. Just the pitch of oscillator two. It changes the rate of the FM. And I turn this up, the range gets wider. Crazy man. And then I can mix some of oscillator two own signal into that. And then the Pittsburgh, it's got its own filter over here.
very smooth filter. And pretty clean. It, uh, the cinnamon will self oscillate when you turn the resonance all the way up. This thing will howl. Um, the Pittsburgh filter doesn't, it won't really do that. Or at least I haven't figured out how to make it do that. But we don't want to do such a nasty sound right away. Oh, geez, 11 minutes, the time really flies. I'm going to stop here and we'll explore further next time.